What's up, Lions of Liberty fans? You can now support this show on Patreon and get exclusive access to bonus audio and video content, including Conspiracy Corner, Degenerate Gamblers, bonus segments with guests, and so much more. Head on over to patreon.com slash Lions of Liberty. Welcome to Felony Friday, a presentation of the Lions of Liberty podcast. Here is your host, John Odermatt. Felons, friends, and freedom lovers, welcome back to another edition of Felony Friday, a weekly show right here on the Lions of Liberty podcast. Of course, every week on Felony Friday, we focus on exposing injustice in the broken criminal justice system. And for the uh, longtime listeners, the veteran listeners, you know that we have three different shows on this podcast uh, network here. We have a show every Monday hosted by Mark Clare. It is our longest running program, our flagship program, where Mark interviews leaders in the liberty movement. Every Wednesday, we have Electric Liberty Land hosted by Brian McWilliams. It is your weekly shot of culture, comedy, and liberty. And we have our new show sandwiched right between those two shows. This is probably a temporary show. It's every Tuesday. It's called Candidates of Liberty, where we interview um, candidates in the Libertarian Party. I know, shocking title there. But uh, we've, I think we've had five episodes. Uh, next week will be episode number six. So go back, check those out. They are uh, they're good stuff. The last one I did was with Brandon Finney, the uh, candidate for... Uh, House of uh, State House of Representatives in New Hampshire. Of course, subscribe on Apple, Google, all that stuff to uh, to get on the uh, subscription to get it delivered right to your phone. And just one more note, I want to bring in my guest. Just want to remind you guys, or I want to tell you guys that we have a big milestone episode coming up. Pretty cool stuff. Monday's episode is our five-year reunion episode. So we're having a, a big thing, bringing all the uh, Lions of Liberty in to have some drinks and uh, talk about the good times, talk about the uh, last five years and the good old days. should be a uh, really fun show, so definitely check that out. And because of that, we have a special right now that we have a five-year uh, limited opportunity to get it. We have a design a five-year design t-shirt that we're selling. Liber- limited opportunity to get the t-shirt. It's a great design. You can get it at lionsofliberty.store. Uh, if you're a Pride member, we have some discounts that we've rolled out. If you join the Pride, we're just going to give you one for free. Even just for five bucks a month, you'll get that free shirt on top of uh, the other perks that you get joining the Pride. Or if you upgrade. If you're in the Pride, you upgrade, you also get a free shirt. So pretty good deal. This is the 141st episode of Felony Friday. That means you'll be able to find the show notes page at lionsofliberty.com slash FF141. Now I'm going to bring in my guest, and he's a guy that you should all know pretty well. He's a uh, veteran of the Lions of Liberty podcast. He is the godfather of the Lions of Liberty, Howie, Howie Snowden. Welcome back to Felony Friday. Hey, John. Yeah, it's been a while. I don't think I've been on Felony Friday in, I don't know, like a year maybe. Yeah, it's been it's been too long, man. Yeah, it's been. I, I know it's, I had. What it's one of it. It's not one of my. It's <laughs> yeah. I guess it's one of my favorite shows of the Lions Liberty Banner. But I mean, some of your shows are like the most important like messages to get out. And these stories of these people are like unbelievable. It's. I mean, Ryan's show is hysterical, but I mean, this is important shit. And yeah, I love Felony Friday and Mark's show. I mean, who cares about Mark? <laughs> Uh, Mark, Mark does great stuff, obviously. And uh, Mark is the guy, I didn't say it in the intro, but, you know, Mark did this, the podcast, he started the Lions of Liberty podcast. He did it two years, basically, not by himself, because we would come on and uh, I think we did it maybe more frequent libertarians in living rooms, drinking liquor type shows. But uh, really two years, he was chugging along before I started Felony Friday. And then, uh, a year later, Brian started Electric Liberty Land. So and it just gets better and better. The last episode of Mark's I listened to is the recent one with Scott Horton. If you haven't heard it yet, listeners, go do yourself a favor and uh, download that one. What was even uh, maybe cooler than that was the uh, the bonus episode. Did you l- listen to that one on Patreon? <sighs> no, I'm still I still need to switch. I'm still paying you guys through Podbean. I got to switch over to Patreon. I was trying to do it. A lot. I was going to do it last night because I really want to hear the Scott Horton Conspiracy Corner. 
but I ended up uh, drinking, playing WoW, and I forgot to do that. But yeah, I was uh, I was traveling for work yesterday, so I was flying. So I was on an airplane for like five hours, and I think the only thing I listened to was Scott Horton because I listened to Scott Horton Mark's interview. I listened to Mance Raider, Scott Horton interview. I listened to the bo- the bonus pride Scott Horton interview. I think it was one more. I think I heard. I think I listened to four different Scott Horton podcasts. But uh, yeah. yeah, he's great, and I am going to make the switch to Patreon. Hey, if any of our listeners knows how, um, I'm an idiot. So somebody explain to me how once I join Patreon, how do I make that stuff show up in my uh, my iPhone like Apple Podcast app? It's super easy to do. I should probably make a video on it, but it's really easy to add it. Okay, that'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, we're not here to talk about Scott Horton um, <laughs> or to talk about Patreon. We're here to talk about felonies. We're here to talk about to play a game that we haven't played in a long time. And uh, we used to do it more frequently here. It's the old game called Is It a Crime and Should They Do Time? Is it a crime? Just a little background on that. Um, when we talk, we're going to go through a list. I think we have like six or seven different uh, news headlines, uh, news articles from the, the past month. Some of them are a little bit older. Maybe if you're in the Lions of Liberty Forum on Facebook, you've probably heard of them. And if you've probably read them there, if you're not, you should probably join by going to uh, facebook.com slash Lions of Liberty. No, actually, that's not how you do it. That's not how you do it. You, you join by going to facebook.com and putting Lions of Liberty Forum in the search bar at the top. And that's how you join. Be, uh, the thought process behind this is it a crime stuff or this segment is it's not like asking like by the book, by the you know looking at the laws, is this a crime? That would be stupid. It's asking really like, should this be a crime? So we're looking at these, should it be a crime? And if it should be a crime, I mean, maybe the penalties should be different than, you know, they are uh, according to the laws that we have on the books today. Maybe it should be more of a civil penalty or something like that. So we're going to talk through these. Some of these are pretty funny. Some of them are kind of weird. Some are kind of crazy. So we'll just start off with uh, maybe the weirdest one first. This is out of Texas and weird shit happens in Texas. A woman in Lufkin, Texas. Uh, She had the cops called on her because she was licking hot sauce packets, and then putting them back. This was at a Taco Bell, of course, and she was licking the hot sauce packets, putting them back, and they called the cops. And I think she was written a uh, criminal trespass warning for Taco Bell. And, of course, they got rid of the uh, the hot sauce packets. But this is sort of interesting, interesting question, Howie. So, Obviously, you don't. If you own a business, you don't want someone doing this. Um, so, what what should be the response here? Yeah. So, the, those packets are free, so it's not like she's stealing, but it is unsanitary and it is screwing up part of their business. Um, I don't know if I would call that a crime, but I think I would tell her immediately to get out. And if they she was charged with criminal trespass, I'm assuming they probably tried to kick her out and she refused to leave or something. That's the case. That's a different crime. But I, I think you just somebody does something like that, kick them out of your store, tell them they're not welcome back, maybe put up a picture to embarrass them. I don't know. But not a crime. Definitely should not do time. It's just disgusting. Yeah, I would agree. Definitely no need for the cops to get involved. Um, I could see being banned from that Taco Bell, maybe. If they tried to kick her out and she wouldn't go, though, and things escalated, then – that's true. That, maybe that, that would actually be criminal trespass, but that doesn't make for as good of a headline as uh, licking hot sauce packets and putting them back. I think this is pretty funny. I'm not going to lie. I think it's you know, <laughs> maybe you don't kick her out. Maybe she's an attraction. You know, maybe it'll bring people yeah, in there. Yeah, you know, I was just thinking that I bet there are some customers that might want those packets. There's some weird people out there. Yeah, probably sell them on but eBay. Make some who, money. Who is that celebrity that like licked cupcakes at like some? Some place to put it back it was like Ariana Grande or something. Like came into a like a store and like lick some cupcakes. Yeah, yeah. She high as shit or something. I don't know, but I guarantee you, I bet you there are people there that wanted those cupcakes afterwards. Is it Ariana Grande or Ariana Grande? I don't know. 
<laughs> we'll have to ask Brian McWilliams that one. He'll we'll get it straight. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, we're gonna keep moving on. This next one is not from America, but it's awesome. So this is in Kuwait. A uh, guy was selling fish, little uh, fish storefront there. And the pictures on this are hilarious. There's, I think there's some tweets in the article too, but guys commenting on it. But it, somebody was taking the fish and the fish were getting old. So they had those like yellow eyes and they were putting those like googly eyeballs on there that you put on like, uh, I don't know, you buy in like a craft store and you put on, put on shit. And I mean, what, what's the deal here, Howie? Is this fraud or is this just a good business practice? <laughs> I don't know. Do they send them home with the googly eyes on? <laughs> like, uh, I are, I don't know. Did they say? It's not like you're saying there's like a sign up like these fish do not have googly eyes. I mean, I I don't see how you could not notice. Um, if, I mean, if if they're claiming to sell fresh fish and they're not, that would be fraud. Mm -hmm. I, I think that claim would be more than the fact that there's googly eyes. Because, like, I mean, people do stuff to their products to make them look good all the time. Like, even if you're just looking at, like, the menu at McDonald's, like, the pictures of the food, the shit you get doesn't look like that. Yeah, that's a good point. Right. I didn't even think of that. It, if, or if you think about, like, like, even, like, getting deeper into that. So, like, produce today. Go to a grocery store. Well, first of all, the tomatoes, tomatoes are not tomatoes you buy in a grocery store. Yeah. They have, like, a tough, like, skin on them now, and they're all, like, perfectly red. Um, God knows how they're growing them. I mean, they're probably GMOs, which whatever, that's, I understand that it's probably, it's fine for the most part, but I mean, it's, it's sort of the same thing. I mean, they don't want to have like an ugly tomato out there. So they're doing all these things to manipulate the genes of the tomato. To don't, make they, don't they put like red coloring and meat to make it look better or something too? Like Yeah, they, they do that. Well, I think wasn't McDonald's like McDonald's basically doesn't even sell beef. I don't think, I think it's just like a red paste line. <laughs> yeah, pink slime. So something else I heard starts as a liquid. I don't know if it's true, but that's what I heard. You heard that the pink pink slime starts as a liquid? No, not the pink slime. Uh, Arby's, their roast beef starts as a liquid. I heard that too. How is that possible? I, well, I heard it at Penn State. So somebody <laughs> told me somebody told me a friend of theirs worked at Arby's, and you wouldn't believe it that the roast beef starts as a liquid. I don't even understand how that'd be possible, but uh. but anyways, the I don't I don't think this is a crime putting the googly eyes on the fish. Um, what would be a crime is if these fish were bad. They were like claiming they're selling fresh fish, and mm -hmm. someone took them home and they're like, wait a second, these just have googly eyes on them. They're not fresh, and took them back. I think they would uh, just be deserving of a refund there. Yeah, I think as long as they're giving refunds and they're not falsely advertising it as being fresh fish, you know, bright eyed fresh fish. Um, <laughs> I don't see a problem with it. No. All right. Moving on. This one is weird. Um, definitely check out the show notes page on this one to see the video. It's on Facebook. It's a, a, a news station that actually interviewed the parties involved in this. This was a, it was through some dog walking service, some dog, dog walking app. So this, uh, I guess this person gave the dog walker, dog slash dog sitter access to their house when they were at work. So they go and get the dogs, walk them, whatever. And the guy comes home in the one day, I guess in the middle of the day, opens his front door and there's two dudes sitting there on his couch that are not the dog walker that are just not wearing shirts, just hanging out. And it turns out upon further investigation, uh, this guy found some bodily fluids on his couch and some other uh, some other things, big bottle of lubricant laying around. So the uh, the dog walker was was a female. So what happened was this uh, was the dog walker at the house or just the dudes? Well, I think the dog walker was still at the house, but was only in the back room when he walked in. Um, they didn't really say, but the news station interviewed the dog walker, which I thought was absolutely hilarious because she starts like defending herself. Like she's like, I feel bad about it. I guess I didn't know. I guess there was a miscommunication and what the boundaries were. And they said something about, they asked her about the bodily fluids and she's like, I don't know. Like I went and I took a shower and when I was sitting on the couch, I was naked, but I was wearing a towel. I'm like, what the fuck? So uh, is this, is this a crime? So the guy had given her access to his house. Um, was, you think there was fine print in that contract that yeah, so, bring people in or so the, this whole time I was thinking this is not a crime. It's not good. And I would fire the dog walker, but the fact that there are bodily fluids on the couch, like if, 
her two dude friends just like jizzing all over the couch. <laughs> that's I think that's a violation of property rights. I, I mean, I, I think she, so. she had she she had access to the house. I don't know. It sounds like they probably didn't say make sure no one else comes in with you. Um, I mean, totally different scenario. But when I was a kid, I know a friend of mine was dog sitting and had to go over like a couple times a day take the dog out. I'd go over with him. There was no shenanigans or anything, but. Totally um, different scenario. <laughs> but totally different scenario. <laughs> and even if, even if they had sex in the house and it was, you know, not, the property was not disturbed, I would be like fine with it. But if this guy's got to go dry clean his couch now, you don't dry clean the couch. Whatever you steam clean the couch, that's it's not a time worthy crime. But yeah, well, I mean, it's the cops, they, they, the cops don't need to be involved. But maybe, yeah, maybe dry clean the couch or. Maybe buying a new couch, or I don't know. It's uh, definitely uh, getting, yeah, getting bodily fluids on somebody. Uh, somebody's if we, couch. I think if it was me, if it was me, I'd probably do anything. I'd probably laugh about it and be like, "Hey, can you uh, maybe not bring a bunch of dudes over to have sex on my couch?" But <laughs> maybe uh, stop doing that. Maybe <laughs> you do that in somebody else's house. But they went through like her reviews on this app. She had like a 4.9 review rating, like the best dog walker ever. These great comments. Maybe so, she is a really good dog walker. I don't know. Yeah. I, I mean, know. I guess maybe her ego got to her. Maybe she's like. People just, get riled up about the littlest things. A little bit of bodily fluids on a couch and calling the cops. Come on now. Yeah. I mean, if she's good at her job, let her celebrate. Why not? Is the dog, is the dog happy? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what the guy said. The guy said, I, I, I hate to think what this dog saw. But I, I don't know. Maybe the dog liked it. Yeah, you know, maybe the dog was having a good time watching. I don't know. Yeah, hopefully there was no bestiality involved too. That would be a. Oh, that's. I wasn't going down that road. No. <laughs> that would be, I wasn't be, going down that road. Be a bad twist. <laughs> oh man! All right. Next up. So we've talked. We talked about this before. It has to do with insider trading. I talked about insider trade when I had Harvey Silverglade on talking about Martha Stewart, and. A lot of people think Martha Stewart was busted for insider trading. Actually, she was busted for perjury, lying about what she thought was insider trading, but they couldn't get her for insider trading, so they got her in the perjury, which is pretty messed up when you think about it. So she lied about not she lied about what she thought was wrong, what what she do what she was doing was wrong, but it wasn't wrong, so they got her on lying about it. That's pretty crazy. But everyone thinks that she was busted for insider trading. But this story, uh, a Cleveland Brown, which is always hilarious when uh, anything happens with the Cleveland Browns, Michael Kendricks, um, he was charged with insider trading. And I guess he made he made a fair amount of money. I mean, I don't think this guy's like a star. Maybe he is, I don't know, NFL, they make, I guess even, you know, bench riders make close to a million dollars or several hundred thousand. But this guy made 1.2 million of illegal profits, according to the law, from uh, four major investments. I guess he had a friend that used to be on Wall Street that uh, had some insider knowledge, quote unquote insider knowledge that helped him uh, helped him to make this windfall. And uh, the guy comes out afterwards. He's apologizing, saying, "I knew it was wrong." Blah 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 blah. I'll let you go first, Howie. But what do you think about insider trading? Do you think I, it is a crime? No, I don't think insider trading is a crime. I mean, if you have knowledge of something, you should act on it. I mean, we're no investing can only be gambling. You can't know anything. You just throw money and hope for the best. But I mean, even Congress is allowed to do it up until like very recently, and it was like fine for them, but not anybody else. Um, I do not think insider trading is a crime. Um, I do not think that lying to the police or the feds should be a crime either. I mean, they lie to us constantly. That's not really fair. The cannabis industry has rapidly expanded. For those liberty lovers who want to take advantage of this growing industry, they've been met with a flood of government taxes and regulation. A lot of cannabis companies would just love to hire a full-time CFO, but that could be super, super expensive. But what if you could have the knowledge and experience of this full-time CFO at a fraction of the cost? If you're in the cannabis business or you plan on entering the fray, then you need to schedule a free consultation with the Grow CFO. CFO, Rachel Kennerly. The Grow CFO will help to maximize cost of goods sold deductions by employing accrual and cost accounting, creating tax savings and improving cash flow. 
They will keep your books in an audit-ready state. If you or someone you know is either already in the cannabis industry or thinking about jumping in the fray, go to thegrowcfo.com and schedule a free consultation today. Yeah, but so I'll come back to you in a minute. But speaking of, of insider trading and you know Congress and the Senate and all that stuff, so like even not even if they do, aren't trading on the information, they are literally voting on passing laws and regulations that affect entire industries. I mean, like massively affect industries can totally either enhance a company's ability to profit or hurt them. You know, putting more burdensome regulation on companies or industries. Different business sectors, right? And right, whether they, whether they, they in, that and participate in the market, whether they invested or not, I'm sure they got uh, tons of money from lobbyists and people that uh, yeah. took money off of it. I mean, they're the biggest crooks in in the game. I mean, these little people for insider trading. This is nothing compared to how the government fleeces us every day of every year. It's uh, it's nonsense. Yeah, I do want to uh, say yeah. uh, clarif- so, clarification to any to any government officials officials listening. Although that Howie and I might think that insider trading is, you know, should be legal, we would never insider trade because we want to go to pri- we don't want to go to prison, and uh, we know the government likes making examples out of people. As you know, what and they seem to do it with celebrities too. They got Martha Stewart, which wasn't really insider trading. They got uh, they got this Cleveland Brown guy. They seem to get with, like people in the public eye. So like, yeah, don't do it. You see what happened to this guy. But that's- hey, can you believe the Cleveland Browns didn't lose a game the other night? They didn't, they, didn't, oh, they didn't win it either, but they didn't lose. <laughs> yeah. It's if I just wish it wasn't against the Steelers, but <laughs> it's the most Browns thing ever to break a losing streak without winning. But. <laughs> oh, poor Martha Stewart, though. You know, she seems a lot cooler than I. I bet this actually helped her career. But, I mean, that's such bullshit that you can't lie to the, the feds. Like, they bring you into interrogation, and they straight lie to you the whole time. Yeah, they can lie to you. They can make shit up. They can say that mm-hmm. your your friend or your acquaintance has this information on you that they share. They can say anything they want to, but you lie to them. So speaking of lying to them, did you hear uh, – so you know how Mueller wants to investigate – or wants to – not investigate, wants to interview Trump? I guess, yeah. I guess Trump's lawyer – Told told Trump that he was like disabled and incapable of like not lying. So he can't sit down and talk to him. He's like, you've got to. If, if, she's like, you're disabled. You can't pos- You can't tell the truth. You can't. <laughs> if you sit down, you're going to get charged with perjury. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know. We, if we can get into that a little bit, because the thing with Trump is, yeah, he does lie. He definitely bends the truth. Um, and I think he's been doing it for so long, and he uses it to his advantage in order to sort of persuade people and influence people in directions he wants to. I don't even think he thinks about it. No, he's just a bullshitter. It's just what he does. Yeah. So I don't really have a problem with that aspect of Trump, but whatever. Yeah. So you can't lie to them folks. So just right, right to remain silent. Don't say a goddamn thing. Exactly. Plead the fifth. All right. Next one. This is a, uh, this is one I heard about a while ago. This was definitely posted in the forum. I believe uh, this is a guy who was using the, the app Bumble, uh, which is, I guess, a dating app. We can ask Mark Claire about that. Uh, <laughs> is, it like, Bumble. is it like Grindr or something? <laughs> is, is Grindr, the, is that the gay one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe, it's, maybe it's gay. I don't know. I don't think, no, it's not, because this was, uh, this was a man and a woman. So For bee enthusiasts? <laughs> for guys and girls that like bees, check out Bumble. <laughs> It's like Christian Mingle, but with bees. Who the fuck likes bees? I hate bees. I got stung by a bee a like few weeks bees. ago in my in my forearm, and it swelled up like the size of a freaking baseball. Why were you bees. messing with them? I didn't realize I was getting some firewood, <laughs> and I didn't realize they made a beehive in like they like a hollowed out log. And they are so fast; like they were on me before. It was it was I didn't even know what it was, and I'm getting stung. It was terrible, so I start start running. Um, there's no lake to jump into, but I, I guess I have <laughs> a, a quick story. A friend of mine, he was like walking in the woods and it, have you ever hear a ground bees. Like they're, I like guess they like, they're like nest in the ground something. I guess he stepped on their nest and also he said, it sounded like, like a chainsaw started up oh, <laughs> and all these bees came. So they getting stung, start running to the house. Like his mom, like wouldn't open the door to let them in. <laughs> 
<laughs> so they like ran and like jumped in the car and shut the doors, like try to like kill all the bees. Got in, like, oh my god! Yeah. Watch out for bees and feds. Uh, yeah, it's, it's one right. of the most dangerous things out there. But uh, honey is delicious, so I guess that's why people put up with bees. And also, you need them to grow vegetables and all that stuff. So, though in China, I think there was a shortage, and they made these like little robot bees. Or no, I don't know. No, that's not what they did. They had people like hand pollinating the plants. It turned out to be cheap, like more efficient and cheaper. <laughs> I did see something on robot bees, though. Maybe it was robot bees. It was either robot bees or slave labor. Either way, I've heard that Elon Musk is going to be investing in robot bees. <laughs> anyway, we got a little off track there, but that's what happens. So. This uh, guy's using this app and he's, you know, using it normally saying, you know, blah, blah, blah. I want to take you out. Let's get some dinner. And I guess he did it with a bunch of ladies. But the one in this article talking about uh, she shows up at the restaurant. He'd already ordered like a a full meal and he was just finishing it. And then he's like, no, no, I'm going to get some more food. I'm going to get some more food. So she sits down. They order again. He scarfs his meal down. He's like, I'm going to the bathroom. and He just leaves. So I guess he did this to like seven, eight, nine, ten people, and they finally caught him. <clears throat> and he's getting charged with with a felony. So with this one, you know, I can kind of see it. I I can definitely see it. I mean, that is you can see a felony charge. You can see a felony charge. But not the felony charge, but I can see the crime. I don't know. What, definitely. What, what do you yeah. think? Yeah, you know, I, I I I don't know. I mean. Did he tell them he was paying? Like, is it just assumed that the man's going to pay for everything? Or, well, that's a good question. Well, yeah. What if it was a lady doing it? Or, like, if, it what be... if he's like, what if he's like a big asshole? Like, go ahead, order anything you want. I got it. Uh, let's get it. <laughs> or does the, the bottle of Johnny, in, Johnny Walker Blue? Yeah. The steak and the lobster. Go ahead. I mean, I don't know. I think I need more details. Is uh, it's probably. Yeah, I guess it's a crime. I don't I don't know. It's not – this is a tough one because the restaurant's going to get paid. I, I mean, I'm assuming the date – they should have at least assumed that they were going to have to pay something. Mm-hmm. I, I guess they didn't assume the whole thing, but I don't know if they had that conversation or not. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I guess on most dates today – I don't know. I haven't dated in a long time, been married for a while. And before that, I was with, with uh, Nicole for a long time. So it's been a long time you. since I've dated. I don't know if people, is it like a suit? Is it assumed today that like you split the bill? I mean, flip it. If a woman showed up not expecting to pay anything and didn't bring your wallet, she's like, oh, I'm sorry. I can't pay. You have to pay. The guy would be like, oh, okay. And he would do it. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's It's not cool. It's a dick move. Uh, I don't know. And this guy's right. Can to keep doing it? <laughs> or if, I mean, take it up to the same exact level. So a guy takes a girl out, the girl eats dinner and then just like decides he doesn't like him and like, uh, just gets up and leaves. There wouldn't be an article written about that. I mean, no, there wouldn't, <laughs> but it, anyway, you know, it's not, a, it's not a felony, no time. Um, I don't know. I think, I think again, like, shame is the way to go like get this guy's face out there ruin his dating life ruin his free meals <laughs> ban him from these restaurants yeah it's definitely not a criminal act um if these women wanted to waste the time taking him to civil court which would be stupid go for it yeah. but uh yeah, i think public shame is the way to go now, all the women should band together if he and, and the date ordered all this food and both left and s- stuck the restaurant that's different but true I think the best way to handle this is all these women band together, these 10 women, and they get a billboard, they put his face on it, and they uh, say, don't date this asshole. Yeah. So that's the way to go there. Free advice. Okay, this next one, you know, I, I, can, definitely, uh, I can definitely see this happening probably in most delis. Uh, this lady had been working in a deli for something like five, no, for eight years. And during that time, she is accused of having like three slices of ham every day, which they totaled up to $9,200 in lost revenue. Who knows how they're going to prove that, but they're saying that felony charges are unlikely. I would hope they're fucking unlikely. That'd be crazy. I thought I read it said like filing any charges is unlikely. Yeah, I would, I would hope so. I hope so. 
But what, what do you think about this? Like in most delis across the U.S., do this probably happens. Like, all right. All so, time. all right. Most libertarians would probably say, yes, it's a property rights violation. They were stealing from the company. But I mean, come on. That's kind of the cost of having employees. They're going to give a slice of hammer that, you know. I don't, you don't wait eight years and then total it up and be like, you owe me all this money. As soon as you find out, you fire them. And you can't just, you have no proof that they've been doing it every day for eight years just because you finally caught on and say, oh, wow, look, they are doing it. Someone said they've been doing it for eight years. I mean, it's a couple slices of ham. I don't I don't think it's a big deal. I think the person gets fired and that's the end of it. That's. Yeah, they can have to, yeah, they can be fired. I mean, that's that's the property rights part right there. They're stealing from them. You fire them. You can't right. go back. It's such a, it's such a small of, petty yeah. thing. I, like, oh, sure, if you add it up over eight years. I mean, come on now. Like, yeah, it's it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous, Howie. So none of these are felonies. None of these deserve time. Some of them are yeah, kind of maybe crimes. Yeah, I, I kept it. I kept it lighthearted for this one uh, for a couple of reasons. One reason because I, you know, I wanted to do a, a fun uh, "Is It a Crime?" review, bring Howie on and, and talk through these, and also Howie and I after this can be recording the uh, the five year Lions of Liberty five year extravaganza or whatever we're calling it. So we, uh, yeah, we're gonna enjoy some adult beverages and, and do that. And you guys can tune in and hear that on Monday. So got anything else you want to add, Howie? Any? Anything at all? Nope, just don't miss the five year special. It's going to be great. Yep, subscribe on Lines of Liberty. And of we're course, recording it right after this, and I've already been drinking for a while, and I had to keep going. <laughs> nice. And of course, uh, if, you, if you haven't joined the Pride, now's a great time to join. By joining, you get a free t shirt at any level, you get that free five year anniversary. We're not going to sell this, like, it's not going to be a mainstay in our store, it's just for a limited time. So pick that up um, for joining, even for, for the five dollar level where you normally don't get any merchandise. Join for five dollars, you're gonna get that T-shirt. You join at ten, where you normally get the free T-shirt, you actually get two free T-shirts. So best can time I, to join. Can I get one if I actually switch to Patreon? <laughs> we'll, we'll get you one. Now. We'll, we'll hook you up. We'll hook you up. We can't get you the email address, but we can get you the T-shirt. Oh, you son of a bitch! <laughs> you told me you could if I voted for your Liberty team. That was lies. I, I would have figured it out. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, that's that's a wrap. And yeah, to join the prize, of course, go to patreon.com slash lines of liberty. That's all I got for today. So from myself, from Howie Snowden, this is John Odermatt signing off. Always remember to keep your head up and the fires of liberty burning.